Blessings, friends, and we praise God for this awesome opportunity on a Tuesday night to share with you some wonderful information. This is Bishop Andre Woods. I am the presiding prelate of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA, and it's a joy to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ with you. And I'm just on just for a moment to uh, share a synopsis of information uh, about who we are, the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA family. I want you to, especially to those pastors and ministry leaders in the body of Christ, wherever you are all over the world, if you are particularly looking for fellowship and covenant relationship, again, this is not a convention. This is not like any other reformation. Kudos to them and God bless what they're doing. But this assignment that we have is totally revolutionary and different in the way that God wants us to handle ministry by networking the kingdom, empowering people to empower the church. So uh, tag your friends, tag everybody you can, uh, and especially to senior leaders. If you happen to catch this, this information, God bless you. Uh, and uh, our email address will be in the uh, description of this live. Also, we'll put it in the comment section uh, for future reference for those that may want information uh, on the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA Fellowship, what we do and who we are. We will be happy and elated to uh, forward you a copy of our uh, brochure that you can read through it and get an idea of what this really is. Uh, it's a fellowship. We believe in covenant relationship. And I just wanted to jump on and to give some information in case anybody that would like uh, questions answered. Uh, certainly you can join me in the comment section and ask your questions for the time that I'm going to be here. And I'll be happy uh, to share with you the information that you request. And so um, our whole thing is that uh, we want to do and be recipients and participants in uh, as answers to the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17. Father, make them one as you and I are one. And so we are doing our part uh, here in this local assembly that's spreading now uh, throughout the country. And even we got some connections overseas worldwide where we're trying to network and greet and meet men and women of God who are serious about fellowship, who are serious about uh, joining together in creating covenant relationships. We all need somebody. Every now and then you need, you need somebody to talk to, somebody to walk some things through with you in ministry. And leaders, uh, you cannot confess down. So the people of your church can only do so much, but you need a man or woman of God who is on the same level that you are and even above. All right, and uh, the Bible teaches us that in the multitude of uh, counsel, there is, there is safety. The more people we have that we can look to, who we can trust, and of course, it's a trust factor where we create re relationship and uh, we grow in friendship one with another, and that trust factor is an all-important all, all factor because certainly you don't want to be confiding and trusting people you can't trust, all right? So we thank God for this privilege. Uh, this ministry, uh, uh, again, let me give you just a little insight. And those of you that care to, at whatever given time you are available, email us and we will set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, orientation and we will give you the information or we'll send you in print a brochure that will help you with some facts. 
on the setup of this ministry, how we're functioning, why we're functioning, and why are we doing what we do the way we do it. Uh, when God gave me this vision, I want you to hear this and hear me well. He didn't give me a template uh, that would be a copy from other reformations uh, in the tiers of leadership and the setup uh, that most people have in common. Uh, we don't have what's called official days, even though God has blessed me to head and to be the founder and leader, presider uh, at this point. Uh, there's nothing set up like that. That is not what God told me to do. It's, it's not uh, politically driven. Uh, we try to keep away from that as much as possible. And we understand Robert's rule and we understand organizational structure. And uh, we do have a, a structure, uh, but we do our best to minimize uh, the politics at all costs. We, we are uh, doctrinally based, Bible based. We have our faith that we believe in and uh, they are listed in our brochure. And we want you to be able to get that and share that and read over it and then pray about, especially if you're out here trying to do ministry alone. Nobody needs to be alone. Jesus didn't send his disciples out by themselves. He at least sent them two by two. And so I'm suggesting uh, to the great men and women of God that I have been witnessing in the last couple of years or so, those of you who are on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram, and all of the outlets, and uh, some ministries are, are new coming out the gate, you burst some of you birth ministries uh, with nothing, no people, no money, but just by instruction and trusting God and God has sustained you and blessed you even through this pandemic. And so my brothers and sisters, uh, this outreach that we're doing is, is for those who may feel the need. I, I need to be just connected with somebody. I need to be connected with other like spirits, other men and women of God who are serious about doing uh, ministry. And that's what it's all about. We're about helping people, empowering people to empower the church. Now, what, what is that all about? It's simply this, that the more we invest in those who God has so graciously given us oversight of, those of you who are shepherds, those of you who are leaders, pastors, and you lead a church, you know, you have the awesome responsibility to feed that flock and to teach them and to guide them according to the word of God. As God leads you, you lead the people. Uh, you're responsible for their souls. You're responsible to grow them in the word of God. And so, uh, when we deal with the fivefold ministries, the apostle, the prophet, uh, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher, that whole government setup that God has given us, and uh, uh, we don't we don't get into doctrinal disputes. We embrace diversity, uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure with all the diverse diversity we gather together uh, of the gifts and the fruits of the spirit among the men and women of God who've been called to specific offices uh, to operate in the church legally, you know, because some people are illegal because they, they really haven't been called, they really are not ordained, they really don't have teachers and mentors as should. Uh, and so there's a lot of things we do, we, we teach, we train, and uh, we want people to be uh, uh, integral and uh, we want them to walk with respect. And one of the things I'm seeing and I'm thanking God for every day is how uh, respect and integrity is returning back to the pulpit 
to the church because of, of, of so many that have misled false teachers, false prophets, and all of the things that we know go on that's been told to us that we can find in scripture as a reference that these things would happen. But we're not ignorant to the devil's devices. We know about all of that. And so this fellowship, uh, we have what's called pastor to pastor. It's an intimate time, a conclave, so to speak. And we come together, pray together, and we're transparent uh, with one another. If there is a need among the men and women of God, we cover one another in prayer. And uh, if there is a need financially, if there, whatever the need might be, counseling or just help in, in the administration of churches, whatever needs to be done, we have among this body uh, so much experience and expertise in the men and women of God who are now a part of this wonderful uh, fellowship of pastors and uh, churches that have come together. We are expanding, we're opening up, we have it now, we're starting what's called our ministerial alliance where those ministry gifts in the body uh, that want to unite with us, we're non-denominational. Let me, let me point that out. So we don't look at uh, uh, the name on your church or the brand or whatever, if you will. We believe one Lord, one faith, one baptism, okay? Uh, I challenge people all the time, if you're gonna deal with denomination, uh, then this may not be for you because we're not denominational lies. You can't find that word even in the Bible. And so uh, when you look that word up, it simply means to divide. And certainly Satan has done uh, his work when it comes to bringing division in the body of Christ. One of our efforts is, is to do just what John 17 says when Jesus said, uh, and he prayed, Father, make them one as you and I are one. Together we stand, divided we fall. We can change the world by working together. You hear what I'm saying? When you read through the book of Acts, uh, you will find the story from Acts 9 all the way to Acts 17. You will find where uh, those 12 apostles turned the world upside down. Paul uh, uh, talks about it uh, in his ministry time, how uh, after Pentecost and the preaching of the word and the spreading of the gospel, not only in, in the, the time of the feast, uh, of the Passover, but even after Pentecost, how the gospel started spreading and how Jesus had already said that they're going to Samaria, Judea, to the uttermost parts of the world, and they've been commissioned to do so. We have that same commission today, that we are to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and look at where we are now. We, we don't even have to leave our churches uh, our homes, we've got this wonderful thing called technology, Facebook, Instagram, and all of the other outlets where we can, uh, uh, with the click of a mouse, go worldwide. My brothers and sisters, this is the hour for the church, the hour of grace, the hour of restoration, the hour when God is looking to use us in such a mighty way. I mean, an unprecedented way. He promised that greater things that we will do. And uh, we have this glorious opportunity. And so one of the things in our efforts to do uh, global outreach is to connect with global ministries, is to connect with ministries outside of our zip code, outside of our city limits, outside of the state of Michigan, across state lines, even uh, across the length and breadth of this great country, the United States of America, and in foreign lands. There's so much work to be done. And there are others around the world, others in your city, others in your state, you know, that are looking for divine connections. And uh, they want to connect with you, man of God. They want to connect with you, woman of God. 
and those that want to connect with, with us here in the city of Detroit. We're open and we'll welcome you with open arms. Uh, we, don't, we don't get into a whole lot of this, that, the other. You know, I'm like Paul. Uh, I don't want to know nothing about you, save Jesus Christ. We don't get into personal things. We, we ask a few questions. We want to identify you. We want to know who you are and uh, what your work is and where you're located. Basic information so that we will become familiar with each other because the Bible is right. You need to know them that labor among you. And so, my brothers and sisters, the interdenominational assembly of churches, uh, we've got USA on it, but uh, we're going global, we're going worldwide, and we welcome you, those of you that know me and know my ministry, Bishop Andre Sonny Woods, you know uh, I'm legit, you know I am a man of God, I am a man of integrity, and I thank God that I'm surrounded with men and women of integrity, men and women who love the Lord and love the people of God, uh, pastors who are serving and serving well. I am, I am so excited about the ministry gifts that uh, are a blessing to me individually and are a blessing to our fellowship. So I, I wanna share that with you. And of course, again, if you desire information you can just email us and say interested. Uh, I at Connect 44, I A C C O N uh, N E C T 44 at gmail.com and let us know you're interested. And we will forward you a brochure for you to read it over. And then, uh, whatever time you're ready and want to connect with us, we will set up. Uh, that particular interview and share with you uh, personally, all right? We're not unreachable, we're, not, we're always accessible, and you can get in touch with us directly, and we'll be happy to share with you. I'm excited about what I see in the body of Christ for the most part, even though we already know we got to deal with some of the things that we've been cautioned about in the Word of God. Uh, we're dealing with the time that have come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but they're heaping unto themselves teachers because of their itching ears. I'm paraphrasing there. But we're living in that day when men's hearts have waxed cold. There's a falling away seemingly from the faith. They're going after things, uh, going after idols, and they're doing things that uh, will probably make God angry, I'm sure. Uh, idolatry is not dead. Uh, it's just a new form of it. Uh, wickedness. Uh, we're dealing with spiritual warfare. We're dealing with a lot of things in the earth realm today. Those of you in your individual lives, you might be able to testify to the fact, and especially to our uh, leaders those who, who lead churches and people and organizations, you know, the enemy is not somewhere taking a break, resting. No, he's still a liar. He still comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He still wants to sift you like wheat. But we thank God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. Thank God for the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that gives us power to overcome and discernment and that we, we have within us the living, breathing power of God himself by his spirit. So my brothers and sisters, we, we are, we are uh, just making this appeal. I don't want to see none of our churches, none of our people of God. And even if you're not a part of this body, Get connected somewhere. We all need a mentor. We all need a pastor. We all need covenant relationship with someone we can trust, confide in, that will pray with us. You know, we call it, you know, prayer partner or intercessors and all of that. That's wonderful. But leaders need leaders. 
Every doctor needs a doctor sometime. I learned that years ago. Uh, I'll never forget in a seminar, Reverend Dr. Fontroy, First Institutional Baptist Church, God rest his soul, said to us in a ministerial uh, seminar that every cook got to eat some time. Who's going to heal the healers? When the doctor gets sick, he consults another doctor. Who's going to help the lawyer who needs a lawyer? Another lawyer. And so my brothers and sisters, so it is with those of us who carry this undulterated gospel, we need others uh, that will help us, that will pray with us, pray for us, people we can counsel with that will give us good, wholesome, sound counsel, and people that will tell us the truth about ourselves, even if it hurt, you know that will bring correction in love, not condemning, you know, not controlling, but aiding and helping and uh, to bring constructive criticism when needed or where it's needed. And so we, we are about that. We're about love, loving the brethren, loving uh, one another to the degree that we're there for each other. And so that is the interdenominational assembly of churches USA. And I am so proud uh, to have this moment to share with you. And listen, I want you to get in contact with us now uh, at any time. We want him to make us one. That's the request. That's our prayer. Yes. I'm going to pray before we go. And uh, I see you got somebody in the comments of Yolanda Dawson. Blessings to you, uh, daughter. And uh, I want to pray. I, I specifically, I'm not leaving anybody out, but I have a burden in my heart tonight. As, as I do very often uh, for leaders, for pastors, because if the devil can bind the strong man of the house, he can take the house. The devil will go after our pastors and our leaders uh, who have vision and they are going about uh, to complete what God has put in their heart as they lead God's people. The devil is not excited about your vision. And the devil is uh, not excited to see you move forward on to fruition and to reach your goals. He's not excited about you being bold enough to preach the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, and so we need to pray for our leaders. I tell people all the time, pray for your pastor, pray for your leader, because they are men and women too. They deal with daily problems, family, career, and a lot of pastors, let me say this, a lot of pastors that are still full, full time on their jobs, they still employed and they go to a nine to five every day and they got to juggle their job, they got to juggle family, the children, and then the church and all of the cares for the people. So they need our prayers. They, 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 need, they need rest, they need consideration, and they need cooperation. Huh? They need servants, servanthood from you. They, they need fellowship over and above fellowship. They just need you to follow, amen. And so I wanna pray and then, of course, the five-fold ministry gifts, the governmental gifts of the body of Christ, the apostle, uh, the church planter, the one who is uh, the organizational uh, lead man or lead woman to the body of Christ, the prophet. And uh, listen, they need us. They need us to consistently bombard heaven on their behalf so that they can stay strong and strengthened, so that they can stay clear in vision 
and that as they teach and train and equip others for the work of the ministry to help take ministry loads off of them, okay? That's, that's what leaders need. They need good staff people, trustworthy staff members and, and board members and workers and uh, ministry leaders in that local church to help accomplish the goals of ministry, all right? Uh, and so let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for this privilege. And as we approach your awesome throne of, throne of grace, we thank you for the ministry gifts that you've given to the body of Christ, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. We thank you, God, that they give themselves totally to ministry. Like Paul, when Paul says, I am a prisoner uh, for Christ. God, thank you for every sacrifice that they have given of themselves, their time, their resources. God, thank you right now for their consecrated lives. And so I lift them up to you, God, to surround them with your ministering angels, protect them as they go about each day, anoint them afresh every time they have to teach, preach, or minister or to counsel your people, God. Even in their time of preparation, doing prayer and study, God, anoint their hearts and their minds. Oh, God, let them down into the secrets of your word and revelation that when they stand to minister to your people, God, they can speak at, with authority and clarity and that your life-giving word, God, will bring transformation to every hearer. Now bless them, whatever the need might be, for all of the men and women of God everywhere. God, supply their need right now according to your riches and glory. Do it, God, in the name of Jesus. The resources that they need for vision, God, whether it be physical, material, whatever they need, give them the capacity mentally and spiritually, God, to maintain until they reach their goal, God. Oh, bless them. Bless the work of their hands. I pray Psalms 90 and 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon them and establish the work of thy hands upon them. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thou it. In other words, man and woman of God, I'm praying that whatsoever your hands touch, God will cause it to prosper here and now in this time. Blessings to you. Thank you for spending these few moments with me. And look for us. Listen, the interdenominational assembly of churches, again, we're open to you, my brother. We're open to you, my sister. And if you need further information uh, on any of my pages, even this page, our uh, fellowship page, you can leave us a message there or do email us directly at I-A-C-C-O-N-N-E-C-T-44 at gmail.com. Let us know you're interested and we'll send you a brochure and then we will set up a Zoom or get with you and uh, converse with you and share further information that you might have questions about. We love you in Jesus' name. Keep this brother in your prayer. Keep me in your prayers. Please, ma'am, please, sir, pray for Bishop Andre Woods. God is so gracious. He's been so good to me, been so kind, and I've got work to do. So pray my strength in the Lord, and I bless you. I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you tonight. That is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. God bless you till we share again.